03. We made it to time. Matthew, I'm going to throw the floor over to you to get us started. Thank you so much. Sorry about that. I'm trying to maneuver this whole slideshow right now. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Matthew Mathias. I am a housing program officer with LISC New York. I'm super excited to be able to kind of talk with you guys, answer your questions, um, kind of give you some more insight on the Developers of Color training program. Um, this has been a really exciting program to be a part of and it would not have been possible and would not be possible without the help of Francilia and Diana and their team, Gio and Bianca as well. So I'd like to also give them a little shout out right now and say thank you. Um, but let me get started about what, what LISC New York is. So we are a national nonprofit that focuses on community development financial um, needs, and we are a, C a certified CDFI that um, primarily focuses on helping underinvested communities with either capital strategy and technical know-hows on how to help LMI people really thrive in the market that they're in. So whether that be community development, um, whether it be real estate, we, we'd like to see where, where our networks might be able to kind of come together and really um, your needs as well. We also have our flagship office in New York City where and on Liberty Street, and we were created in 1980. So over the past 40 years, LISC New York has supported local partners um, whose services, programs, and really missions are really aimed to create equitable, inclusive, and sustainable New York City communities and just firms and really businesses. Um, LISC New York believes that the time has come to forge a future for New York City that eradicates the, rational, the racial wealth gap for good protectable affordable housing for low and medium income New Yorkers. And we also believe in building a pathway for meaningful economic opportunity for all, for all individuals. So we're really excited to be able to really forge this mission specifically through this program. And hopefully you'll see how shortly. Um, our platform, so we are held up by three pillars. So you can see the three pillars right there, radical healing, inclusive economic transformation, and sustainable wealth generation. Um, they're backed by intentional and strategic approaches um, through our different programs and through our different lending efforts as well. Um, I'll start with the first one, radical healing. Um, we need to be able to examine and address the underlying assumptions that perpetuate bias and bigotry, not only just in our own market, but also through the legislative and public policy that's being passed. And so LISC takes a strong stance to really fight for the equitable opportunities for BIPOC communities and underinvested communities specifically to kind of give them the equitable platform in their respective markets. So we believe that engaging with different cultural institutions and different communities and different um, programs directly targeted for this radical healing is the is the only way to find equitable change in in New York City. We also, oh, I'm over here jumping slides. We also believe in inclusive economic transformation and we prioritize this through just investing in those areas that we can really bolster this. So that would be just public and public infrastructures in the community, human talent, and really believing in, in the different potential of just individuals, individuals that are MWBEs, the small business firms that are taking their unique platforms and really and really galvanizing them. Um, we believe in innovation, diverse small businesses, and impacting community organizations. Um, and then lastly, um, we believe in sustainable wealth generation, and this is our, our third pillar. So we explore and implement programs that support entrepreneurship, ownership, career ladders, and financial mobility and wealth building in communities of color. Our challenge, and this is a direct quote from our senior executive director, Valerie White. For too long, however, minority-owned firms trying to break into the industry have been boxed out. Structural barriers have prevented minority entrepreneurs from accessing capital and contracting pipelines. The professional networks often necessary to get started in this industry are frequently out of reach. And so LISC New York City strives to bridge those gaps, bring people together, use our general network 
to amplify those firms. So List New York's holistic service delivery. List New York is building out a suite of programs that will transform BIPOC owned firms in the real estate and development market into thriving, sustainable businesses that contribute to New York City's economic recovery. This can be seen through this specific program, the Developers of Color Training Program, but also through our marketing agent training program. And now I'd also like to turn it over to um, Francilia Wilkins Rahim, the Chief Executive Officer for RF Wilkins Consultants. She's been great. Their team is amazing. I'm so, super excited to um, pass it over to you guys. Um, excellent. Thank you so much, Matthew. Um, it is always a pleasure to work with the LISC New York team. Um, my name is Francilia Wilkins Rahim, as Matthew shared, and I'm the CEO of RF Wilkins Consultants. We're a business development management consulting firm, and we've done a plethora of projects throughout New York City, New York State, and the Eastern Coast, everything from being the compliance and engagement consultant on the 17 billion redevelopment of JFK Airport, to working with companies like Google to scale programs for minority firms, to working like programs with programs and companies like LISC to create the Developers of Color Training Program over its now third three iterations. So it is my absolute pleasure to have myself and my team as part of this project. So I'm going to first go into next slide, please. A little bit of background from where this program started and like what we're looking to um, do as it pertains to uh, to minority real estate developers. So. For years, I have worked with organizations um, from the New York Real Estate Chamber to agencies like EDC, HPT, <clears throat> HPD, um, organizations all over the state, really looking at the disparity and inequitable access for minority firms across every single sector, okay? When we talk about minorities in the real estate development space, you know, the gaps are as dramatic and tragic as every other sector. Um, we see that there is a lack of access or ability to access capital. I will say over these last kind of six to eight years that has shifted in monumental ways, um, especially now in the last two to three years, you're seeing more areas to access capital um, for us in the real estate and development space, um, to lack of access to relationships in the market, um, to lack of access to just overall technical assistance for your growth, right? So in the first iteration of the Developers of Color program, we are now at our third cohort, and this started last year. LISC realized these map market gaps also and said, How, first of all, let's have a real conversation with the market, whether they be developers, whether they be the funding or financing entities, whether they are the um, government agencies that a lot of these entities want to work with, let's figure out what gaps are truly, truly people are experiencing. And so from there, the responses that we got from these surveys were that market gaps people always said developers of colors are not monolithic. Like we are not all the one same individual doing the same thing. There's a lot of areas where we are participating in this real estate market and that needs to be understood. The other thing that we heard from a lot of the developers are that markets, market biases exist, right? And they perpetuate this assumption that minority businesses are high risk. And so therefore we can't get financing that minority businesses don't know. Um, and therefore it's, you know, difficult to work with them that they don't have the capacity and that the biases in turn impacted the access to capital and continue to for these businesses. And when I talk capital, I'm not only talking about debt capital, I'm talking about equity capital also, right? Because we all know equity is needed to play in this game of development. Okay. The other thing we found was financing access. We found that not only were developers having limited access to favorable capital resources, but also that there were systemic structures in banks, in institutions, in financing entities that made that connection to the capital difficult. Finally, we found that we found that folk needed technical assistance. So we understood that there were. Um, experienced minority de developers, they, they know their trade. Like there's folk who are very, very experienced. They've been doing this for a long time. They know their trade. But even they said, you know, we've had so many different people at different scales and levels doing this Developers of Color program, which I will tell you from the um, feedback from our developers, 
it has been beneficial to have people at different levels, but everyone needs some type of support and, and access to technical assistance. More support is needed for emerging developers um, when they're setting up and structuring and doing the first deal and all that. And then emerging developers will thrive with additional market support, right? So we realize that it's not just the emerging folk, it's the everybody having the access to relationship, access to capital, having access to technical assistance is all needed. Next slide, please. So from there, after considering the, all this information, we came up with the first model of the Developers of Color program. And the goal of this program was to help MBE developers not only expand their capacity, right, but expand their, and, and that happens through the technical assistance and training and the mentorship from, you know, folk who have been doing this for a whole, you know, long, long slew of time and having access at a really big level. But we said they need to expand their project access, right? We realize, and, and every one of us here knows this, right, that the best way to do good in any space, to do well, I've had a business now for 12 years, right? The best way to scale into a successful, viable business is to have very strong relationship markets, um, relationships across the market. And what we found were that a lot of our minority small businesses did not always have the best relationships with the banks, the relationships with the other developers, the relationships with the other agencies. And understanding all of that, we said that these items, plus becoming more competitive in this growing affordable housing pipeline that we see happening, especially in New York, we were seeing this a year and a half ago during COVID. Um, we're seeing this even more now with the surge of, you know, uh, uh, immigrants coming into the country with the surge of, you know, you know, homelessness and all these things that affordable and, and the surge of, you know, an increase. Um, kind of availability of people who are, you know, um, middle income people, right? And who also need access to affordable um, housing, low and middle income. And I say that because New York is extremely expensive. So our affordable housing looks different than some other markets sometimes. So we said that we would build this developers of color training program. And the goal of this program would to, for our counter, our colleagues, our counterparts, our folk in the market to not only have um, access to um, more networks, but we would um, create access to capital opportunities and build capacity and help to support your existing portfolio. We wanted to create a network, um, a synergistic space for um, developers in this space to support your scale, developers of every level. And I will tell you today in this third program, we have had developers who have been in business for 15 plus years who have businesses that tr um, transfer to their family. We have had folk who have transitioned from construction to development. Um, and we have had folk at, you know, literally who are midway in their career or, you know, just at, in business three to four years. And they all have, every single one of them have had success because of how we've structured this model. Next slide, please. So I will tell you again about our two cohorts that we have so far. Um, so our first cohort, we had 12 developers. That was our inaugural cohort. We wanted to keep it as kind of intimate as possible. Um, we were able to do a plethora of training session, sessions, modules, workshops, total of 40 training hours were provided. Um, and developers had at least three hours with a personal coach. So that personal coach were individuals who were in the market. Um, they, you know, everyone, I mean, from, you know, um, uh, and I don't know all the names that y'all know, but Meredith Marshalls, who's the head of BRP, Clyde, um, Chris Bramwell um, has actually been a participant. Meredith Marshall, a coach, every single agency has participated in this program to just provide information to our participants. So um, Don Peoples has come on and spoken to our participants. So you name it, across the spectrum, we have had high quality state of the art coaches um, and state of the art participants in the program, as well as state of the art um, speakers and facilitators coming in to facilitate. So we had um, speed networking. That first cohort was connected with Columbia. The second and third with Rutgers University. So this cohort will be connected with Rutgers um, and the facilitator will be coming from Rutgers also. So next slide, please. Our second cohort, we doubled the size. Um, we had 21 participants across the market. Um, these um, 
individuals went through the summer program. So they had 11 sessions and now, you know, COVID had kind of slowed down by, that, by this time. And so we were able to have three in-person networking events where they were having the opportunity um, to meet people real time. They had over 30 training hours and intimate conversations. Um, and now we're gonna talk about this matched with sharks. So each one of these cohorts had an opportunity for a Shark Tank-like pitch competition. And that's what the end of this program is for every single developer. We said that we were kind of sick and tired of folks just talking about access to capital, access to capital. And we understood that there has to be a bridge sometime between that relationship. So every developer participating in this program will get prepared um, to do a pitch to at least three sharks or one to three sharks. And these are entities, financing entities in the, in the um, market who are looking to finance your deals and projects. So one thing we ask is that you're coming to this space with a deal already on the table, something in the works, because by the end of this, you will have an ability to pitch. And I will tell you, we have had huge success. The first round, I think 20, um, 11 of the 12 participants were connected to um, the Sharks for an opportunity for capital um, after their pitches. And in this second round, 14 of the 17 part um, 14 participants, 17 of the 21 actually ended up pitching. We encourage every single person to pitch and they were connected with the Sharks or industry investors during the Shark Tank like pitch competition. Usually in the past few years, we've had a conference connected to that competition. This year we're doing just straight um, pitch competition because we did the conference for this year. But any participant in this cohort will also have access to the next conference for the Developers of Color program, which will be in next year. So I'm gonna take a second and I am going to, there is a video, Diana, I, we're going to skip this slide, but I do want to show testimonials. Diana, if you can just put up your testimonial and then we'll share over in a second. Uh, Matthew, let's keep going. And then Diana will share her screen to share the testimonials. Next slide, please. So let me give you a little bit about the elements of this program. But this is an eight-week um, uh, program. It actually ends up being eight weeks of instruction, but it's broken over a three-month period only because um, what we found in the first cohort, it was broken over a three-month period. The second cohort was summertime, so it was broken over two months. And the one thing that everyone said is that breakout that's not so back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back, um, for courses is very important. So this is broken over an eight week period of instruction. And basically all of these sessions, um, the instructional sessions are all virtual sessions. Um, you will have a facilitator um, as well as a co-supporter. And every single session you will be getting information from the best of the best in the market. We have, as I said, everyone, every single EDC, HPD, NYCH, every agency has been a part of this. Um, that's one of the housing agencies in New York City, New York State. Um, we have had some of the largest minority developers all present. We have financing entities, bank. We have lawyers come on board for you. We have every single part of your deal. We bring the support to you so you can meet them, you can talk to them, you can hear best practices. And then at the end, you receive everyone's contacts to be able to connect um, in, in certain ways to help drive yourself forward. We will have at least three in-person networking events. So these events, are, you know, in person will usually have some type of panel and some type of presenter from an agency, a bank, or somewhere where, again, you get that ability to build the one on one relationships. I mean, we have had conversations with agencies like DOT where most developers are like, I'm not really working with DOT. And then they leave and they're like, wait, why am I not really working with a DOT? <laughs> like, you know, I see opportunities in a lens that's a lot different than, you know, I initially expected one-on-one -on -one coaching. Each one of our participants are connected to a coach. You get four hours of coach time during the program. Um, Real-time assistance with deals in the project pipeline. So again, we're asking you to come to the table with a deal in your pipeline. That's when it's most beneficial. Um, when you have a deal that you could real life get assistance and support with, in the workshops, we will be working through your deals. Um, we have, as it pertains to the pitches, been open to um, you know, allowing you to JV 
with other developers from our prior cohorts. And that has proven very successful. Sometimes after going through the cohort, developers are now one open to connecting with you know, the bigger realm of list developers of color um, uh, members, but people have gained so much experience from when they started. I don't care how long they've been in business. They've gained so much experience from when they started to now that, you know, their pipeline are filling up. They're looking to partner with more developers. And especially the, the members who passed who were not necessarily as ready to pitch are looking to come back and get a pitch again, right? Um, and so in some cases, they have um, partnered with members of the cohort to come back in and pitch a joint project. And then of course, access to capital um, from sharks and investors. Capital looks different. It may be debt, it may be equity, it may be a bunch of different things, depending on what investors are in there. That's what they're bringing to the table as it pertains to capital. Next slide, please. Um, so what are we looking for in a firm to participate? And I will say, if you do not fit right in the box, please still submit your application. What we have found, especially in the years when we open up to larger cohort, um, we have found that there are certain people who may not have the exact number of experience or the exact number of projects, um, but we, because of space, have allowed them in and they have been very beneficial from the program. So please submit your application. Um, if you have a specific circumstance that you would like to share, you will have an opportunity for Q&A in about one set in a, a few minutes. So first, we want somebody located in the New York City region. That is a must. Um, and when we say New York City region, that means New York City. Now we've expanded to New York State, um, Long Island, Westchester County, or Northern New Jersey. Okay, so New York City, New York State. Um, Long Island, Westchester County, or Northern New Jersey, um, you all have access to this program. At least 51% of your ownership must be by a person of color, Black, African American, Hispanic, Latin, Native American, Asian, Pacific Islander. When we say person of color, that's what we're looking at. Um, you might fit in certain other boxes, um, which is fine, um, but we want 50% ownership. This program, as Matthew mentioned in the beginning, we really want to ensure we're creating opportunities and access for minority developers in this space. You're, um, we, really um, appreciate when folk have their MBE certification. I will tell you, we have never had a program to date yet where everyone has been MBE certified. It is not a requirement to participate. And we will also have SBS on board for the people who need their MBE certification. Um, um, you will be able to get access to them. So certification is not a requirement. It's something we like to see. The participants in the program must be a senior partner or owner of the company, okay? And they have to have at least five years of experience as a real estate developer, all right? This program are for the, is for the ownership, for the decision makers in your company, period. So either a senior person or a senior leader or owner, um, this is what this is for. We need decision makers in this program because there are a lot of you know, strategic resources that are really for the owner of a company. So participating, um, we want to make sure that you're, you have experience in developing either housing, commercial spaces, industrial spaces. And the project size is either 50 units of housing or greater or 15,000 square feet of commercial space or greater. That is what we prefer. Again, if you don't fall in the box completely, let us know. Be very clear in your application where you fall. Um, 50 employees or fewer. Now, I know for the, some of the developers, this is a little, you know, tricky, right? Because we all know that when you're building, when you're in the process of building, you know, your team is getting bigger and bigger. And that is absolutely fine. We're looking at your full-time, you know, staff that you have in your company. Um, so 50 um, full-time or, uh, or, 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 or less. And if you have a little more than that, it's fine. Um, you, you, again, share the information and we can go from there. And then at least one active real estate project in your pipeline. And this can be anything from affordable housing, um, affordable housing project, um, something that, you know, has, you know, HPD or HDR or EDC dollars or something allocated. It doesn't have to be affordable housing. You could have a commercial project in your pipeline. You could have, you know, an industrial project in your pipeline. We are open to a variety of projects in your pipeline. Next slide, please. 
Um, here is a, some quick elements of what we discuss from a curriculum level. So we'll do our introductory cohort, our market overview, structuring your business to do business, and we go really deep dive, doing business, public and private projects. When I tell you we go everything from uh, structuring the deal, project financing, avoiding project line, landlines, and building relationships with the market, we go deep. I will tell you, I, I keep saying this, even the most experienced developers have left this like wow, that was different. That was a different, very amazing experience. Um, and we add a plethora of different tools and resources in these conversations so that you can continue to scale your business. We're looking at businesses that exist that are operating. Our job is to support you in your scale. Next slide, please. Um, so here's a quick timeline. A little bit of you know shifts may happen on some of these dates, but we want you to look at this because our expectation is that you are on all of the sessions virtually, right? We know there'll be one or two times you're unavailable. So we want to make sure we've reduced these sessions where there are only three, um, two hours a session um, and two sessions a week. Um, they're not every single week over this three, three uh, week period, but because we do skip all the holidays and stuff like that over this three month period. However, we want to make sure you are available and we share this information now. So if you want to screenshot this screen, um, we share this information um, to make sure you know that this is a good fit for you. But we already released applications. They went out September 21st. If you have not received the application and you would like to, um, we will drop the link. Diana, if you could please drop the application link here for anyone who has not received it, it will be in your chat. Um, September 28th, um, which is today, we're having this virtual information session where we can answer your questions. Applications are due by October 12th. This is a hard deadline. We expect to start the program by the 25th and select participants by about a week after. Dates might change by one or two days. Um, but this is our expectation. So we do have a hard deadline for which applications close. We've done this at this time. So you have at least another two and a half weeks, almost three weeks to get your application in from this point. Please do not delay. Do not be one of the ones that are last minute. We have already started receiving applications. We are already under review of applications. Um, so this is important that you move quickly with your submission. Do not wait till the last day, because I will tell you, we are already reviewing applications as they are getting submitted. We will have networking events, um, usually have about three of them. Um, and again, these are in-person times where you can meet your cohort, meet members of the past cohorts, meet your coaches. Some of them do come. And then also meet folk in the market. That'll be pivotal to your, um, you know, your growth as a company. In January of 2023, we will have the Shark Tank investor pitch. So after we go through the program, we have a little break for Christmas and all that. We come back in the following week. We are looking to do the pitch where you will real time be able to meet in person with um, one to three investors, do your pitch live time, and they will real time give you a go or no go. The Sharks um, saying that they want to move further with you in the investment conversation. Now, I will tell you this. In no way does this mean that we are, you're not going through an underwriting process that a bank would have. What it means is that a banker or an investor of some kind is saying, I really like what you're doing. I have interest. Me and you are going to sit down and try to move this to the forefront and get your project closed. And LISC is saying, while they're helping you, we're going to help fill the gaps. LISC has a lot of gap filling products to help fill the backs, um, gaps to get your deal done. Whereas in many times you may go to a bank or another institution and because you don't have something, your books don't look a certain way or something like that, you're not able to fully participate or get some type of you know debt or um, equity to your project. LISC is stepping in and saying, no, no banking institution, we want to cover that gap. And so if you march with, match with one of our folk, we want to try to work with you to get this deal done as much as possible. Ne um, next slide, please. And, and we end, I'm sorry, with focus groups um, to your presentation. So while, before I go into q and I'm going to have Diana, if you can share your screen um, and just share a little bit of the video um, from members of the last cohort. And while she is working on getting that share up, I will also allow you to um, ask Q&A after this video presentation. So Diana, feel free to share the video.
sound issue. So I'll give you a second to just share with the sound and then we'll go ahead and share your video again. So. Trying to work on it. I'm not sure why you can't hear it. Do you hear it? Francilia, you're on mute. As we don't hear the video yet, but as we're working to get the video shared, I will open the floor and we can go for a Q&A. Um, and um, we can get certain questions in while we're working on that on the back end. So I'm going to look in the chat and see you can raise your hand if you have any questions. You know, this is safe space. Feel free to ask anything you would like. Um, but any questions that you may have about the program, um, this is that time to ask your questions about the Developers of Color program. Yes, we did share the link with you for the questions. Um, and it's at the, I'm sorry, for the application, it's at that SurveyMonkey link that Diana shared. Um, is this now also open to Northern New Jersey based projects as well? So yes, New Jersey um, is in the cohort. And the answer to that is yes, it is. That is one question. Um, we would like ideally that you're doing projects in New York. I'm going to just share one additional thing that, but yes, you're open to apply. Um, and if you're a Northern New Jersey developer, we would like to see New York based projects, but again, it's open for you to apply and we're, we're, you're under consideration also and able to access financing. Um, one of the items that we want to also really, really stress is please submit comprehensive applications. The applications do not take long to fill out, max 10 minutes. But what we have found in the past is people are giving like half pieces of information <clears throat> or not completely explaining their company and what you do. Um, and so that's one ask that we have. Please be sure that you're comprehensively filling out the application. What time will training sessions be held on Tuesdays and Thursdays? Um, so right now we're looking at 11 to 1. Am I correct, Diana, with that? 11 to 1 for the training sessions, Tuesday and Thursday. They're all virtual. The sessions um, for um, that are not on Tuesday and Thursday, i.e. they're the networking sessions, usually happen at night. These sessions are in the day. They're pretty quick, 11 to 1. Um, and that's when the training sessions are being held. So 11 to 1 is when the training sessions are being held in the day. They're usually pretty quick. And we also are really good with timing. Um, and so we do not, um, we rarely ever run over. We just kind of go in, go out, and people get to their business. Any other questions? Any other questions? And feel free to raise your hand if you want to speak out loud. Um, are the apps weighted as in large versus smaller affordable versus market rate? So no, we don't rate versus on what type versus what type of looking at what type of project you are working on. Um, and we rate you on what you where you meet the requirements, right? So if our requirement is 50 units and 15,000 square feet and you have all of that or or and 15,000 square feet and you have all that and you show it, then you're getting a full score, okay? Um, we're able to easily know which developers are bigger or smaller or where they are in their process. And we ask, again, this is a focus on mostly developers, okay? So this is a program for developers. So whether you're a contractor and you're transitioning to the developers, we have accepted contractors who are transitioning. Um, and But the focus here are for is for developers. Um, so I see uh, another question. So that that's just answers that will basically give everybody a, a fair scale for rating. Um, 
and but we look at how you meet the requirements that we've requested. How much of your capital will you need to make a project work? So that is actually a, a, a question for people who are in the program, right? But I'll just answer you at a high level and tell you as a developer, it really depends on what your finance, your capital stack is, what your structure, you know, what else is in your capital stack, you know, who's playing what, you know, did you get pre-development dollars from another entity, whether it's like a pre-development fund or somewhere from LISC or whatever, all of those things are going to inform. Did you acquire your property already? Did you acquire physical property? Did you acquire empty land? All of that is going to be um, pieces or factors in how much money you actually have to put out for a deal. That's really a deal to deal um, question. Um, and that's something that we can explore even further when um, all of the experts and folk are on in the program. So Thanks. another, oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I just, I just wanted to say, I, I have the video open whenever you are ready, but ready. you can just finish up questions if you'd like. Okay, perfect. I'll do a few more, then we'll do the video and open up the floor again. Okay. So the next question that we have here is, this program is only for developers. It is the Developers of Color program, yes. So it is for developers. Um, as I said, we are open to, if you're a contractor transitioning into a developer, but the focus here is you're working on a development deal. That's what this program's focus is. If you're a developer working on a deal, um, that's what this is for, okay? Um, if you're transitioning, we're open to that too, but the focus again is for minority real estate developers. So um, if you're a contractor transitioning, we're opening, we're open. Um, sometimes we've had folk who are, you know, consultants of different type participate. But again, that would be very specialized if you're developing on a deal. Um, and that's very important. How often is this program available per year? Um, so I don't have a full answer for that. It's really on a basis of funding, how much financing is available for the program. Um, we are on our third cohort. Um, and I think that we have, I, I don't, I'll throw it over to you, Matthew. I don't know if there's any update. I don't, we don't know yet if there's a fourth cohort, um, but this is the third cohort with the first round of financing that we've received um, on this project. Matthew, would you like to add anything further? Yes. So we started in 2022 um, and this is our third cohort. So um, kind of like what Francili was saying, um, it is dependent largely on on just the, capa the, the capacity of developers who do need this training and also the funding. So um, that question, I can't give you a, a direct answer right now, but hopefully there will be several programs offered um, next year and the years to come. All right, excellent. So I'm gonna take a pause now and allow you, Matthew, to share the testimonial. We'll open the floor up. We have a few minutes left for more questions after the testimonial video, and we can go ahead and go and share. Just let me know if you guys are able to hear it. Okay. I would say the experience had been amazing because this was a new world for me to learn about. The good problem that we have on the program is we are overwhelmed with opportunities. Now we have to figure how to scale. I think you spoke about that at the beginning. Yeah. And that's a challenge now because we are starting to say no to opportunity. People have already stated it has been amazing. Um, it has allowed me to think bigger um, and to think outside of the box. Uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, it was very reminiscent of my days at Rutgers, and I have to say that this program is on par with the curriculum there. This program has been phenomenal. Um, you are a wealth of information, a wealth of knowledge. You and your team have done a phenomenal job. The resources, it's like the green book, you know, but it's all, this is the developer's book. Like all of that in one place is just magnificent. This has truly been a wonderful experience for me. I I learned a lot. I've been in the construction industry for over three decades, and I've learned information here that I have not learned for those three decades. You were extremely informative. It's nice to see people that look like me in the positions that we are, that you are in, and I I feel a sense of pride and you know urgency now to um, do more. 
All right. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. That's some testimonials from folk in the last cohort of the program. Um, I will open the floor. Are there any other questions that anyone may have? Any other questions that anyone may have about the Developers of Color program? You can raise your hand live, or if you would like, you can drop it in the chat. I see Desmond, go ahead and unmute yourself. And then I'll go to Shaquille. Hi, how are you? Um, I just had a question. If we currently have products under review at HPD, um, JP products, should we still apply? We you know, the HPD is running uh, behind the closing, so you know we have no idea when our products are closed. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. If if you have projects with HPD, definitely still apply. I know it's under review. We know HPD is back up. Absolutely, please um, apply. Definitely, um, Shaquille. Yeah, hi, good morning. I'm excited to get in the program, but thing is, I'm seeing developer. I'm working for HPD also doing emergency contracts right now, uh, going fixing the things. And I'm I'm not a purely developer. We do the contract for city, state, and all schools. So can I apply for this program before? I don't want to put an application that has been rejected. Right. I will say that we are um we are really targeting developers because the thing is you're you're coming in kind of as a contractor and we have had contractors who even the woman that was the first person on the video she was a contractor transitioning into development right um it the way how this is structured you end this with pitching a project for financing okay and if you're a contractor, you're not pitching a project for financing. Um, and so that is one of the big things that if you're developing a project, that's when we're considering you're, you're you know, developing. But it, it, it looks a little different when I'm hearing from you as your contractor working on, you know, large government based projects. Um, and so development is really kind of the focus for what this program is. I'm, 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 I'm trans doing transition to developer. I'm, I'm finding the property, but I need funding too. I'm, I want to go in development. That's what I'm trying to go in. Can I apply for this program? That's my actually the base of the question is. If you're transitioning, yes. I think you would have to show experience. So just from an application lens, you would need to show your experience on the types of projects you've worked on and the scale. And for those transitioning companies, the one that we, you know, one or two we that were in the last cohort, they were transitioning, but they had the ability to show that they've worked on large projects, they've worked with government agencies. So this was a good fit for them. So if you can show that, then I would say go ahead and submit your application. I'll do that. Thank you. Excellent. I have a question. Have any developers from cohorts closed on financing started construction yet? Absolutely. We've had, so I just want to say, and you all know this, a project takes some time. We've only run this program now from 2022 to now, so maybe about a year and a half. We have had cohort from developer one, uh, um, developer, sorry, from cohort one, close on financing. Um, and have projects that are co currently under construction. I don't know if anybody has finished a project. I doubt it um, because it's only been a year since we started this program. But yes, we have had um, folk get financing from one of the sharks um, and, you know, close um, and that are in construction. The answer is yes to that. Any other questions? Any other questions? All righty. And if Go you guys ahead. do have any additional questions, please feel free to email me. I'm from List New York. I'm going to drop on. You just muted Matthew. But I think we heard you say that you will drop your email address in the chat. Um, and so look out for Matthew's email in the chat and we will go from there as it pertains to any questions. Any further questions? So it is 1246. We ended early, we love to do that. Um, if you have any other questions, we invite you to apply. We ask you to please apply on time because you know this process goes quickly um, and we don't want you to miss out. Um, and we're not sure when the next Developers of Color program will be. So we ask for you to please apply, please apply at time and share with a friend and share with a friend. I think we are accepting 
between 15 and 20 in this next cohort. So uh, we do want to put out there that it's, it gets competitive. Um, so get your application in. We are under review as we speak. And we hope we see some of your faces in the third Developers of Color program by LISC New York. Thank you for your time. And we hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you, everyone.